Welcome to NTN Nightly. I am General Novel. This edition Stop Stories. The Chief Medical Officer renews calls for the public to vaccinate as more cases of the Delta variant are recorded in country. Preparations for the 14th Annual St. Lucia Taiwan Partnership Trade Show are being finalized. And the Minister for Youth Development engages the National Youth Council. The Ministry of Health, Wellness and Elderly Affairs received notification from the Caribbean Public Health Agency of nine new cases of the Delta variant. Chief Medical Officer Dr. Sharon Belmar George has informed that all of the cases are nationals, the majority from Castries and Grosley. Five of them are female, four males, and the ages range from 18 to 60 years. Based on contact tracing data, the majority of the cases that we are seeing right now are acquired from non-adherence to the recommended protocols. We note excessive social activity, especially on weekends, even during the curfew hours. The contact tracing team has informed of the positive cases providing false contact information withholding their place of employment and contacts. This prevents us from tracing and testing in a timely manner. The respiratory hospital also reports that many persons remain at home with respiratory signs and symptoms for extended periods and only access care at the critical stage which leads to poor outcomes. Dr. Belmar George is advising the public to access care at the respiratory clinics or respiratory hospital if unwell. Signs and symptoms of concern include shortness of breath, difficulty breathing, tightness or pain to the chest, feeling weak, pale or blue colored skin, lips or nail beds. If you have chronic conditions, please get reviewed by a healthcare practitioner if you suspect that you may have COVID-19. The positive cases in home care are reminded that they are not to leave their place of isolation. They contact the home monitoring team or healthcare provider via telephone with any concerns that they may have. Family members and friends are advised to deliver groceries and needs to those persons who are positive in a safe manner. By supporting each other, we'll get, we'll get out of this. We continue to ask the public to work with us and exhibit responsible behavior to manage this fourth wave. Let us all take personal responsibility to keep ourselves and family safe. From July 25, 2021 to September 26, 2021, there have been 5,703 cases at an average of 91 cases per day. During that period, 94 COVID-19 deaths were recorded with a case fatality rate of 1.6%. Females account for 53% of the deaths. The average age of the deaths is 66 years. Meanwhile, the public is being encouraged to get vaccinated against the SARS-CoV-2, the virus that causes COVID-19. The available vaccines have been proven to be safe and effective in protecting persons from developing COVID-19 in severe forms, complications, hospitalizations and death. It is against that backdrop that the OECS Commission pulled resources for a regional drive. COVID-19 vaccines, a dose of the facts, a production where medical professionals throughout members of the Organization of the Eastern Caribbean States, OECS, speak to their country's COVID-19 situations, the effectiveness of vaccines, among other things. OECS's Program Director of Health, Dr. Avian Bamudu, indicated that OECS member states have been battling waves of infections, and these waves have translated into waves of severe illness, hospitalizations, and deaths. Dr. Bamadou noted, however, where vaccine uptakes are high, the negative impacts of the virus are reduced. Where vaccine rates are high, severe illness, hospitalization, and deaths remain relatively low, even during a COVID spiking transmission. Since the COVID-19 vaccines became available, countries are in a race to vaccinate their population. The more developed countries have greater access to vaccines with levels of vaccine and higher levels of vaccine acceptance. Our world in data provides interactive customized graphics which tracks the vaccination rates by country relative to population over time. Within the OECS, 
Angola is the most vaccinated of the OECS countries, with approximately 60% of its population fully vaccinated. This is followed by British Virgin Islands, with approximately 45% of its population fully vaccinated. Next, St. Kitts and Nevis, with 41% of its population fully vaccinated. Next, Antigua and Barbuda, with 37%. Dominica with 29%, Montserrat 28%, Grenada 18%, St. Lucia 16%, and St. Vincent and the Grenadines 12% of their population fully vaccinated. Family physician in St. Lucia, Dr. Tanya destang Bobre, provided an insight into her experience dealing with COVID-19 positive patients. She noted that symptoms among those who were vaccinated were less severe than those who were vaccinated. The family physician also addressed the issue of breakthrough infections and its impact on the confidence of people on the vaccines. Oh, well, I do like to call it breakthrough infections because it, it sort of intimates that we didn't expect infections with the vaccine. At no point in time did anybody say that vaccines would prevent infection. No vaccine does that. We've had, if we've had measles, children who have been immunized with measles, mom and rubella, come up with measles. You know, we've had children immunized with chickenpox who come against chickenpox who come up with chickenpox. So we know that there are chances of infections if even if you're vaccinated. However, what we know is that the vaccines, because of how they work by priming the immune system, the infections are milder, fewer complications, and, and the duration is usually shorter. So we are aware that the COVID vaccine will not work as, as well as, as, as people thought they would. But we're also seeing that the benefits are one, they are less likely to get infected. And if they do get infected, they are less likely to transmit the infection. And if they do come down with the infection, their disease progress is, is milder and shorter. Head of Health Promotions in Dominica, Mignan Rule Schillingford, explained that Dominica has been managing a surge in cases. However, the vaccines have aided in that individuals who have been vaccinated have less severe symptoms, if at all. The Head of Health Promotions in Dominica noting that some vaccination hesitancy is due to the belief that the vaccine may not have gone through the normal procedures due to the short period in which it was produced provided some insight into the development of the vaccines. I want to continue to assure, to reassure the public, you know, of Dominica and also the other Caribbean the OECS countries, is that all of the vaccines that have been given emergency approval or approval, as in the case of Pfizer, have gone through the stages of development. And what are the stages of development? One, there's a computer algorithm that is used to model how the vaccine will interact with your immune system. So it first is a computer algorithm. Then it is, got, it is tested in cells in a culture and that is in a test tube. Okay, so I remember you, I know you remember when you did science at school, there were different things that you would do in a test tube. Um, so that's what happened. From there, when they are satisfied with the information, they get the move to testing on animals. After animal testing, that's when they move to human testing. Now, this human testing is done in three stages where they check the efficacy, they check to see how it works, what's the possible impact on humans, and all of that. And these are done by many different and um, gross different countries. This information, when they are satisfied now, is put together and sent and applied through the different licensure agency. In the case of America, is the Food and Drug Administration. And of course, in other countries, all those who are responsible for allowing this to be used and used. So the vaccines that we are refusing, receiving now that come from WHO, PAHO, you know, and approved by this agency, all of these have gone through this stage of development. As the region continues to fight new cases of the virus, health professionals continue to re-emphasize the benefits of vaccines in combating the COVID-19 pandemic. From the Government Information Service, Humedi Mark reporting. In other news now, the Ministry of Commerce, Manufacturing, Business Development, Cooperatives and Consumer Affairs, in partnership with the Embassy of the Republic of China, Taiwan, is gearing up to host the 14th annual St. Lucia-Taiwan Partnership Trade Show 
on November 26 to 27, 2021. The trade show will showcase the unique products and the sales of Taiwanese and St. Lucian MSMEs to both the local and international community while encouraging the general public and business entities to buy local. Propelling business development through technology is a theme for the 14th annual St. Lucia Taiwan Partnership Trade Show scheduled for November 26 to 27, 2021. Minister for Commerce, Manufacturing, Business Development, Cooperatives and Consumer Affairs, Honorable Emma Hippolyte, alongside her team from the Commerce Ministry, met with Taiwanese Ambassador, His Excellency Peter Shen, and his delegation to advance planning efforts for this year's trade show. The trade show aims to heighten awareness of ICT business solutions while showcasing unique products and services from Taiwanese and St. Lucian micro, small and medium enterprises to a local and international audience. To increase trade and business is very important uh, job for my embassy uh, for, and also to enhance the relationship between Taiwan and St. Lucia. And as you know, Taiwan is uh, uh, a trade uh, country. We export a lot of our products. So that's also one of our mandate to uh, export to, uh, to help our company to export their products. But uh, also we try to uh, increase the awareness of uh, Taiwanese about uh, what good products are in St. Lucia and to enhance uh, mutual, uh, the interaction or exchange between uh, two, uh, the business between two, uh, two countries. Honorable Hippolyte noted that the Ministry of Commerce will assist all St. Lucian businesses to improve the standard and quality of their products and services to be export ready and to build their competitiveness. We must get businesses going. It is when the business uh, matures and makes profit, we need to employ people. And the long and short of it is every St. Lucian wants a decent job, that they can get an income, and that they can feed their families. That is a summary of what all of us want. And we can only do this when we have a Ministry of Commerce supporting the business community, talking to them, removing and helping them remove the challenges that they have, and helping them get into new markets. Marketing specialist with the Ministry of Commerce, Cindy Eugene, said due to COVID-19, this year's trade show will rely heavily on the use of ICT as the platform to propel business development and to increase awareness of St. Lucian products and services. The trade show here is part of the Love St. Lucia campaign because the Love St. Lucia campaign is an emphasis to encourage persons to um, be familiar with what St. Lucia produces, encourage the use of St. Lucian goods, encourages the trade of St. Lucian goods and services. And here we look at goods and services from Taiwan and the partnership here is to get some support from Taiwan, be it that we can trade, be it that we can see some great distribution of goods from Taiwan within the Caribbean, and we can also seek to get some manufacturing tools, some machinery to improve our processes here in St. Lucia to have more efficient products similar to what we see coming out of Taiwan. Ambassador Chen believes that the focused ICT and virtual platforms at the trade show will attract greater interest in Taiwan and other international jurisdictions. I think there's a lot of products and a lot of uh, uh, good uh, resources in uh, St. Lucia and I really encourage more people to come to St. Lucia or more people to do business or invest in St. Lucia. A memorandum of understanding will also be signed at the trade show between the Taiwan External Trade Development Council and the St. Lucia Chamber of Commerce, Industry and Agriculture. We are hoping that by signing um, the MOU, members of the two bodies would have an opportunity to start doing business-to-business -business arrangements with their counterparts in Taiwan. The 14th annual St. Lucia Taiwan Partnership Trade Show will feature 14 Taiwanese companies, 12 St. Lucian businesses, the American Chamber of Commerce in Barbados, and the DigiGov project from St. Lucia. For the National Competitiveness and Productivity Council, Glenn Simon reporting. The Ministry of Youth Development and Sports and the National Youth Council have forged a closer partnership following a meeting with Minister Honorable Kenson Casimir. Julita Peter reports. Minister for Youth Development and Sports, Honorable Kenson Casimir, has expressed his commitment to strengthening the relationship between his ministry and the National Youth Council, NYC. The Youth Development and Sports Minister, 
who met with the executive of the NYC earlier this month, stated that he held youth development very close to his heart. He added that St. Lucia's youth needed to have a greater input in the development of their country. For me, it is very important that the youth gets a seat at the table. The youth gets the opportunity to share their perspective on how we develop this land, simply because the way we develop this land will ultimately affect their generation and the generations after. So I've always been one who's part of the youth movement in my community. And uh, so it's something that, that I treasure and I hold a lot of fond memories from. President of the National Youth Council, Anya Edwin, welcomed the opportunity to meet with the ministry officials. We're hoping that whatever comes out of this meeting will be a very, very beneficial discussion that is going to redound to a lot of action and not just talk for the young people of St. Lucia. Meanwhile, Honorable Kazemi commented on the importance of the youth being given the same concern and regard as shown to other stakeholders and prominent members of society. He urged the NYC to constantly speak out and to ensure that their voice and the voices of the youth of St. Lucia are always heard. So you'll hear me speak a lot about, uh, for instance, uh, giving persons in the creative industry, persons in dance, performing arts, the same amount of attention as you would give a Darren Sammy, the same amount of attention as you'd give to a John L. Eugene, that sort of thing. That is how I see youth development. And I don't see youth development coming from the top down which is why we are meeting here today. I think it has to come bottom up and it has to be symbiotic. It has to be at a level where there is always conversation and consultation. And so if anybody heard my first um, contribution to the parliament, uh, I championed the call for from since cabinet ensuring that if you're going to be dealing with a scourge like COVID-19 that affects young people a lot and we're dealing with a dynamic where we have a variant that seems to be affecting persons within the age range, the age range of, of youth, that we must have a young person at the seat at the table. Minister Kazemi plans to meet more regularly with the NYC to ensure that his ministry's goals for the organization are achieved. Julita Peter reporting for the Ministry of Youth Development and Sports. The skills and capabilities of law enforcement, customs defense, and security forces responsible for border controls to detect firearms trafficking have been significantly enhanced following the detection of firearms trafficking training course. The course, which came to a close on Friday, 24th September, focused on the detection of firearms trafficking through postal and fast parcels at land and maritime borders. Deputy Postmaster General Dennis Inglis expressed gratitude to the United Nations Office on Drugs and Crime, UNODC, for the well-designed course. And I'm, I'm, I'm heartened that this has not dissuaded agencies from focusing efforts on dealing with other ills that affect our borders. And these ills, for example, I'm speaking about the trafficking of illegal firearms. Um, and this has caused an urgent need for training exercises like this to build capacity and also to implement relevant changes. In that regard, I would like to thank or show my appreciation for UNODC, impacts, CARICOM impacts, and the government of St. Lucia for this timely intervention. Uh, rest assured, we at the post office will ensure that our team members basically employ whatever skills that they learn during the five-day training session. Deputy Comptroller of Customs Sherman Emanuel, describing the training as timely, highlighted its significance in keeping St. Lucia's borders safe. Um, the Customs Department is pleased that we will not only include it, but we could also collaborate with others in this exercise. Um, we believe, like the Royal St. Lucia Police Force and the Postal Service as well, our mandate has a significant national security implication if it is not carried out as it ought to be. So this training is timely. It is timely, um, and we are happy 
that we could have had a number of officers benefit from this training and we do believe that the training will be implemented, will be carried out, and we believe that it is going to positively impact our border security situation. Minister for External Affairs, International Trade, Civil Aviation and Diaspora Affairs, Honorable Alva Baptiste, noted that such trainings are paramount to preventing crime and keeping the relevant agencies one step ahead of the criminal entities. Police reports recently found that some organized criminal groups have been using parcel services to smuggle firearms into countries, often by selling their parts and components separately because they are harder to detect. So they send a weapon, not in its totality, not the whole weapon, but they send different parts. And you see a real component, it will not arouse any suspicion. And therefore, there must be that nexus between customs, the police, postal services, and every aspect of that chain that is responsible for ensuring that we are smarter than the criminal networks that are sending firearms to our country. The one-week training course was facilitated by the United Nations Office on Drugs and Crime, UNODC, and the CARICOM Impacts. This is NTN Nightly. Primus Hutchinson is up next. Stay with us. Welcome back. We join Primus Hutchinson for the NTN Nouvelle Aquayol. Monsieur Tan, General, Monsieur Madame Department, qui est responsable pour information en gouvernement cette fois-ci, ça c'est GIS, à sa bibi télévision nationale, via NTN, Caposito Nouvelle Aquayol, présenté au Primus Hutchinson. Premier ministre, c'est ici, on a Philippe Jepier, fait un appel pour l'année en bout pour bawad économique qui a sous Cuba. Premier ministre, Pierre a l'air qu'à adresser grand assemblage général nation uni samedi passé. Premier ministre, Pierre a crié pour l'Amérique vivre et visiter chapitre en l'histoire par Jelonta qui passait côté effort des diplomatiques entre l'Amérique et puis Cuba. Tu as chimé pour vivre et ranger et ça c'était en bas président l'Amérique Barack Obama. Ça c'était du moment où vice-président Joe Biden a visité Cuba côté administration ça là qui a gardé pour normaliser les relations entre les pays là. Premier ministre Pierre fait déclaration ça là du moment adresse là qui était faite par communication internet. Premier ministre Pierre a une explication fait comprendre qui c'est le si quartier Belamé et puis pays Caricom et commune globale ça veut dire à toute la terre pour couiller à sur l'Amérique pour entrer en une relation normale et puis pays des républiques Cuba et pour abolir la barrière économique qui a bloqué la capacité d'augmentation économique et ça aussi c'est un obstacle pour capable pour capable de réaliser en plein une efficacité économique en région caribéenne. Le Premier ministre de l'ICI fait comprendre aussi les gens qui ont considéré de manière Cuba à supporter ces pays caribéens à service de santé, éducation, sport avec le développement social. Et il a apporté un peu de bénéfice sur la relation normale encore entre l'Amérique et puis Cuba. Le Premier ministre Pierre a observé qu'il y a un temps qu'on a présent, quand il a été accepté autant de la gorge, il faut qu'on comprenne et accepte la grande quantité de ressources que Cuba a pour faire. En une adresse pour l'observance journée des affaires touristiques à la Terre, Ministre des Affaires touristiques à cette ci ça c'est Honorable Dr. Ernest Hiller, fait un appel pour cette ci continuer pour bâtir résilience et durabilité 
a industry touristic pillar. A memta keep a set of a SAG, if you sell a pandemic corona. Except for a social, keep minisil, diki, no tooth, nipple participate. We batty sector touristic. Dr. Hiller declared, in this essay, cause it to seek a continue for fair batai, cot corona, for no osi fair asiriki, lanis kiwite, for travail, cote nusa pochue, for cono ekla famino, osi, ek sipu suppose a sala, ki fair no tooth nipple fair eye for participate, for we batty sector touristic, who put a bon benefice, for the citoyen, a common asset lessi. Minister touristic la, fair copon. Depuis l'année et a options à voyage et business, ça a affecté la situation économique toute la terre. Et en particulier, tout pays concerne le Le ministre Hiller a que c'est faux gouvernement et c'est pour faire possible pour chaque monde de trouver un petit morceau à bonbon touristique là, pour aider à augmenter le travail et pour que les gens puissent un business eux-mêmes et pour bâtir un gymnase qui est fort et puis agriculture et économie de jeunesse. Dr. Hiller dit qu'il y a un lot de monde qui dépend de l'industrie touristique. Par exemple, les agences de voyage, les travailleurs à l'aéroport, les chauffeurs de taxi, les compagnies qui apportent des touristes tout partout dans le pays, les travailleurs de l'hôtel, les rivandaises, les gens qui ont loué des établissements touristiques, les bateaux, les plus de l'autre. Le concept touristique et le voyage à la terre, c'est que depuis le programme de la vaccine, il continue avec toutes ces restrictions des voyages baissés. Toutes 62 millions de travail qui m'ont été perdus, qui vivent en place petit à petit pour l'année 2022. Malgré la pandémie de Corona qui en est cause plusieurs institutions d'éducation pour faire, mais l'année de la population des enfants qui ont retourné en chambre sur l'école, et ça c'est parce que le service d'éducation des petits enfants ont fait ça en réalité. Officier qui est responsable pour l'étrennement, c'est Ruth Philippe Février, déclaré que c'était une collaboration et puis plusieurs agences qui ont fait ça possible. Il dit qu'il travaille et puis plusieurs agences de gouvernement, le gouvernement de santé, pour faire ça assurer les jeunes enfants avec le travail à ces institutions-là, qui ont opéré à d'ailleurs le gouvernement qui s'en est sort. Madame Février dit aussi il est tenu pour implémenter un plan et puis bureau de santé pour établir tous ces protocoles pour te faire assurer que toute protection en place pour ces petits enfants là. Administrateur pour yonan ces institutions pour éducation des enfants, ça c'est Precious Jewels Early Childhood Development, ça c'est Donna Sanchez, dit que ces institutions te pour tuer plus qui les sont pour aider ces assister ces petits enfants là. Parce que yon petits enfants, depuis fait, pour yver 7 l'année, c'est un temps qui est très critique à la vie. Il fait comprendre que les gens ont opéré pendant toute l'autre institution d'éducation qui a été fermée. C'est parce qu'ils ont établi un set protocole qui fait plus facile pour que ces enfants la suivre l'année 131 de l'école qui est ouverte avec l'opération présentement à cette ci Et c'est comme ça que nous avons trouvé la Je vous remercie autant pour que vous ayez monsieur, madame. Je vous remercie pour l'invitation. Je vous remercie pour vous dire que vous la vie et que vous avez pris cette nouvelle à quoi vous avez pris. That brings us to the end of NTN Nightly. Join us next time at 7 p.m. with a repeat at 7 a.m. You can also catch up with us anytime on the St. Lucia Government Facebook page or YouTube channel. I am Janelle Norville.